Good morning on this Wednesday, June 20th. The biggest weather headline across the nation is the ongoing flooding across several cities in Minnesota, and it looks as though more rain is on the way. Thanks for tuning in to 28storms.com. This is a breakdown of the unfolding weather event across the Northern Plains. At this hour, we still have flood watches in place across all of the Minneapolis and St. Paul metro, but up toward the north, we've already been experiencing some extreme flooding, and this goes back all the way to yesterday afternoon when the rainfall began. And as you can see across the north shore of Lake Superior, we've got nothing but a plethora of flash flood warnings. This also encompasses the city of Duluth, where we've already seen photos and video, along with more reports of evacuations due to the massive flooding that has already taken place. We even have flash flood warnings evident across eastern South Dakota and if you look closely there's even the remnants of a severe thunderstorm watch although the good news is that the severe weather potential is beginning to wind down. On the flip side it looks like the heavy rainfall threat will persist through at least Wednesday evening. Radar estimates over the last 24 hours confirms that Duluth has been near this highest swath of rainfall and we're starting to see estimates as high as five to six inches and this is being confirmed by some of the storm spotters near the city and even as far north and west as Grand Rapids we're starting to get into two and three inch territory here and as we stated before it looks as though the rainfall threat is going to linger for at least another 12 to 24 hours so more rainfall accumulation is to be expected the latest regional radar shows that Duluth is still experiencing steady rainfall at this hour, but what is more concerning is the heavy squall of shower and thunderstorm activity that is still located well out toward the west to the south of Aberdeen, and if this trains over the same area, then the major flooding concerns are only going to be magnified. The only hope is that this boundary that is stalled out from southwest to northeast can potentially start to push a little bit more toward the southeast, but that is something that we cannot guarantee at this time, so flooding is still a major concern going into overnight Wednesday. What is the culprit behind all of this heavy rainfall? Well, if you look really closely on the latest National Service chart, we've got this stalled out front. And as long as this stalled out front remains in the area, we're going to be in the risk of significant weather. And upon closer inspection, if we zoom into some of the latest surface observations across the state of Minnesota, you may be wondering why some portions to the north of the front are still experiencing heavy rainfall because as you can see, the northern half of the state, they already have northerly winds, the temperatures and the dew points are lower, so the front has definitely passed by, so this may be a question that some of the viewers may have. And the brief answer is that even at 5,000 feet, sometimes you can get southerly flow that goes up and over that cold front. So overall, the moisture content throughout the atmosphere remains very high. And some of the variables that we look at can show you this. For example, this is what meteorologists call the precipitable water. And even though that front has passed, we're still seeing precipitable water values as high as 1 to 1 1.5 inches across northern Minnesota. And of course, just to the south of the front in the warm sector, they're nearing 2 inches. And this also tells us that we could experience up to 2 inches of rainfall per hour with some of those heavier storms. If we observe the national satellite, you can see that much of the country is experiencing rather tranquil weather. But as we zoom in toward the Midwest, you see that the storms just continue to fire along that cold front. And we are just waiting for a mid to upper level disturbance to help push that cold front more toward the east. And if we look at the water vapor imagery, this does show us what is happening more so in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. And there's not a whole lot happening across the Dakotas. You see that the flow is primarily from southwest to northeast parallel to the front. And that's not good news because a parallel storm motion is not going to allow that front to advance. But the good news is out over Idaho where we can barely make out this impulse moving in from west to east and this is going to be the one saving grace that allows the rainfall activity to end no later than Thursday morning. The latest model guidance is showing that the end time for the heaviest rainfall near Duluth should be no later than midnight Thursday morning but not until we start to see at least a couple more inches of rainfall we're talking about one to three inches but it could still be locally higher in areas that experience training and that is going to be the main concern for the National Weather Service over the next 24 hours. So this was just a basic rundown as to why we are seeing the flooding up there across Minnesota 
and hopefully viewers found something useful out of this tutorial or at least the analysis aspect of it. If you want to follow us for more weather information and more breaking weather coverage not only of this current flooding situation but also of more breaking weather coverage across the United States and in the tropics where we are dealing with hurricane season you can find us at 28storms.com if you go there right now you will also find our Facebook widget and you can scroll through some of the latest updates regarding this developing weather story along with information from weather events all across the globe. So thanks again and don't forget to check us out. Thank you and be safe out there.